Oh. I was cutting this thing out and I thought it might be kind of interesting to show y'all a thing or two. Now the way I'm doing this is um, let me get my straight edge here. A combination of using a straight edge and my knife. And then on the end where it's a shorter cut, I use my little rolling cutter to cut that. Cut this edge even. Whoop. I got my little utility scissors out in case I wanted to use those. And also my knife. This is actually, um, well, it's my favorite knife. For doing like the final cuts on leather. Especially if I'm going to be cutting a shape like around the end of it there. I'll just take this knife, embrace it with my whole hand, and just follow the line. Now generally five ounce is uh, thin enough that a lot of times I can cut through it in one pass, but sometimes it takes a couple of passes through to get all the way through like well actually I got that on one pass I thought I was going to show you how, how I was going to uh, how, how I was going to have to take two passes to get through but it cooperated let's just cut this last little bit here And there you go, that's the leather cut out now. Now what I'll need to do is to take the original piece. And since this is about the same thickness, actually it's pretty much exactly the same thickness, I can mark where I gotta skive my edges using my skiver. I'll just take my little uh, uh, scratch all, put that up to the edge, mark it there. Yeah, it does tend to get cluttered because, like, I'm pulling everything out and laying it all over my uh, little workbench here. But it's good to have the stuff that you need when you need it. And then I'll go ahead and skive that down and do the same thing to the other side. In fact, let me mark that. Yeah. Actually, I want to mark it on the bottom. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I got Isaac Hayes all in the game going through my head. It's one of those songs that just get kind of gets kind of stuck, and you hear it over and over. But I like Isaac Hayes, and it's a good song, so that's not so bad. Okay, let's go ahead and mark that. Now, if I was dyeing this black. I would go ahead and just use, use an ink pen to mark it because I'd be dying in black and you couldn't see it anyway. Let's check and make sure my sky is sharp enough. Oh yeah. And you can see what the sky is doing is cutting off a thin layer of, uh, of leather. And I want to bring that down so where it overlaps, it's no thicker than a single layer of leather. So I don't have a big bulky joint.
Okay, I got a little more to do. I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this. And we'll come back when I get a little bit further. And I get a little bit more work done on it. See, you have to look. Oh, I'm gonna trim that off. You just take it like this. Take your knife. Trim these flappy bits off. And you have a sky. It's, it's, I got a bit more to do, but you can see what I'm getting to. That's going to skive down to a taper. So I'm going to skive that down to a taper. And then when this is folded over and glued, that tape will end up being the same thickness as this. Um, don't really have anything I could show you, but I'll show you when we get back. Speaking of stitching, I'm going to be using a box stitch on this. So all I'm going to do, as far as this part goes, is I'm going to mark on the bottom here. Actually, I already marked it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Where I want my awl to come through when I'm doing my box stitch. So as I'm guiding my awl through, I got something to aim at. Because you can see where the awl's about to come through before it does. And you can adjust it from there. Anyway, I took my dividers, adjusted them to an eighth of an inch, using my little ruler here, and I'm just going to mark a line. I'll start at one end, following the edge of the leather, and mark it on across. I don't know if you can see that before, but I'm pretty sure you can see it now. All I've got left to do now, actually, is to dye this. And, um, I mix my own brown dye. I use chocolate and uh, saddle tan to mix my own shade of brown. I couldn't see having another bottle of brown when I could just mix two bottles of stuff that I have now and make my own brown. I'm going to go ahead and apply that with a dauber. And if you're curious about how it's done or how I do it, you can just look back at my videos. Basically, I just spread it on with a dauber and let it dry. No real big mystery on that one. So that's where I'm going to end it tonight. When we come back next time, we'll be ready to go ahead and put this together. Oh, I just remembered something. I said I was going to put a stitch line across there. I better go ahead and mark that. Just a little bit proud of an eighth of an inch. Okay, then I got to go ahead and punch those holes. We'll come right back and I'll show you how I go about doing that. Okay, now I'm set up to, to do me some stitch holes. So what I'm going to do on this end, I'm going to use where these two marks cross. And that'll be my starting point. Right now, I'm just marking. So I'm going to press my punch and mark some holes. And do that on a cross. doesn't come out quite exact so that shows me I'm going to have to fudge just a hair to get that to come out exact on the other end but I always mark my holes prior to punching them that's got two holes right there I'm going to fudge this one just a little bit and pull it back a little to help line that up. Just take like a fraction of the spacing off at a time and you come up even. 
Then I go ahead and use my big punch. And bang it on through. Okay. Now it's ready to die. Ready to die. Ready to die. Poor thing. <laughs> yeah, you see how that's going to fit around. Might have to do some trimming there. I'll check it against the uh, the original to see how much that has, that has to come around. Now, before I put dye on this thing, let me show what I was talking about with this overlap here. So that's going to get, um, well, overlapped, glued, and then stitched. Got stitch holes marked on the outside. And then I can go ahead and punch them on through with my stitch and all. So once the glue's dried, I can just take my stitch and all and punch the holes on through. But like I said, let me show you what, what I was talking about with that overlap. Okay, now you can see that once this is stuck together and stitched down and glued and all that fun stuff, that this part down here is pretty much the same thickness as the leather all the way around. So it's like a continuous thickness of leather. And you don't have a big bulky, well, blob of or or a mound of leather there where where the two ends come around and it makes for a nicer neater construction also what i did on this part is i just put a little hole at the end of it so instead of just ending it's just it's just a little detail that it's the kind of thing i like to do on my uh on my leather work is Give it a more, it gives it a more finished look, a more detailed, more um, crafted look rather than just throwing together. But um, now it's ready for dye. And I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. Let it sit overnight. Sometimes over a couple of nights, depends on how long it takes for the dye to dry. I like to make sure that it's completely dry before I go messing with it. Because not only do you get it on your fingers, but it can affect the final product, look of the final product. And I don't want that. So, uh, that's it for today. We'll see you next time. When I get a little bit more work, I might have a little bit more work done on it. I'm not sure exactly <laughs> where it'll be next time we come around, but yeah, we'll be back. See you then.